What is shaken, Internet? This is Salt's bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Dark Shaman Guide. The Corcoran Dark Shaman are the seventh bosses. Seventh boss? Seventh boss in the Siege of Orgrimmar raid instance, and the third boss for the second quarter LFR instance named the Gates of Retribution. For those of you in queue or fighting trash, a quick synopsis. Kill the dogs, swap the bosses every five stacks of frost, frost storm strike, don't stand in puddles, storms, or near elementals, and the bosses will continuously gain more skills and do more damage the later in the fight you go. Okay, let's start on the real guide for dummies. First up is trash, and boy is there a lot of trash. You'll want to clear everything in the main arena before you can even face the boss. Most of the things here don't do too much, but you do need to be aware of a few of them. The Overseers are rough, as they will hit hard, and reduce the amount of healing you get by 50%. Obviously, this means that if there are two Overseers, then each tank needs to take one to avoid a 100% healing reduction. The Treasury miniboss hits very hard, it seems, so be careful when pulling him. You might want to even kite him around if possible. I'm honestly not sure yet what starts this fight, but it might be releasing the trolls from the cage after killing the Treasury boss. Um, either way, once activated, the two shaman will come out of the main building and you're ready to engage them. This fight progressively gets more complicated and more hectic as it goes. The fight starts with the two shaman jumping off their wargs and all four of them, the two shaman and their two wargs, attacking you. Each tank should pick up a shaman and a warg and the warg should be targeted down immediately. These will die quickly because they don't have a lot of health, but they do cleave attacks, so face them away from your raid and the other tank. The, boss, the bosses don't really start out with very many abilities, except for one each. Earthbreaker Haram casts Froststorm Strike quite often and continuously throughout the fight, which progressively increases the amount of damage future Froststorm Strikes will do. This means you'll have to swap bosses quite frequently throughout the fight, whenever Haram's tank gets to about five stacks. Wavebinder Cardris starts with Froststorm Bolt, which is just a nuke on his tank. It can't be interrupted and doesn't get any stronger, so nothing to do but suck it up and take it like a bear. The bosses share a health pool, so keeping them close together whenever possible is a good idea for Cleave. Uh, however, they will continuously gain new abilities throughout the fight as their health drops, so the fight will get more and more complicated as we go. At 85% health, each boss gains their first new ability. Haram will gain Toxic Mist, which is just a DOT that increases damage taken as it goes. He will place this on random raiders, but if he puts it on a tank, be careful of bonus damage. Cardras, on the other hand, will gain Toxic Storm and Toxic Tornadoes. Um, these basically make giant purple clouds and purple tornadoes that you should avoid. I believe the storms go away after a while, but the tornadoes seem to stay around for a very long time, if not the entire fight. So you'll be avoiding these pretty much the entire time. Once you get them to 65% health, they will get more abilities. Haram will gain Foul Stream, which he basically shoots out in a narrow cone slash line. Just to be sure, just be sure not to stay in it, or you'll take a bunch of damage. Uh, Cardrus gains Foul Geyser, which basically deals a bit of damage to his tank and spawns a lot of slimes. Now, luckily in LFR, these adds can basically be AoE down, but be aware these adds deal damage to anyone near them. They have a damage dealing aura to anyone within three yards of them. In normal, this is a big problem because the damage is way too high to effectively tank near the melee group, but this isn't as much of a problem in LFR. Just put some AoE down and pop a cooldown if you need it. At 50% health, the bosses will gain one final ability each. Haram gains Ashen Wall, which spawns a wall of elementals. Now, it seems that these spawn on or very near the tank, so as soon as you see them, you need to move away. These elementals do a lot of damage to anyone in melee range, but they don't move. They are very annoying because they stay around and leave a giant wall you have to run around and avoid. Just keep moving around them. Cardrus will pick up Falling Ash, which is a move that puts a giant circle on the ground. After around 15 seconds, everyone standing in the circle will take a boatload of damage, so don't stand in it. You'll have 15 whole seconds to move out of the giant circle, so move out of it. <laughs> The only other move that the chamois do is that they will increase their damage output when they reach 25% health uh, by about 25%, making it a heavy burn phase. Otherwise, that pretty much covers the entire fight. To recap in four words, don't stand in stuff. There is a ton of crap in this fight to not stand in, and the fact that you'll have to keep switching tanks makes it a bit hectic. 
At the beginning of the fight, remember to face the wargs... Oh, well, I guess we'll... Let's, let's recap. At the beginning of the fight, remember to face the wargs away from the other raiders and the other tank. Continue to swap bosses at five stacks of Froststorm Strike the entire fight. At 85% health, start moving away from toxic clouds and tornadoes. Once they reach 65%, watch for the green lines slash zones and don't stand in them. Then round up the adds and burst them down quickly. At 50% health, watch out for the wall of elementals and the giant circle on the ground. Don't stand in or near either of them. Watch for the soft enrage at 25% health when they'll bump up the damage and get your cooldowns ready. I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy guide for dummies. Please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And, as always, you keep it salty, Internet.